How to address the feeling of being broken. That's the topic we're going to share here today on Self Love Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, this conversation actually got started on um, Relationship Thursday, last Thursday, where I actually brought up the topic on being broken inside of a relationship and what are kind of some signals, some ways you can identify if a person's actually broken. And that actually opened up a can of worms in terms of the feedback and more depth into the, each topic that I mentioned. And so it's actually a conversation that will take a long period of time. So what I'm going to have to do is today I'll kind of touch on them briefly, but I'm going to probably have to take each topic and go on each one separately as its own particular conversation. And you guys give me feedback uh, and let me know if that's something that you want me to do after today, after you hear kind of me going through it briefly, or if you feel like this would be sufficient. Um, either way, you know I'm open to doing whatever it takes to help uh, anyone I can to get their lives back on track. So what I did is I talked about Thursday, is I talked about, and if you guys see me glancing, it's because I wrote down notes to make sure I didn't miss any of the things that I mentioned on Thursday. But we talked about trust issues being a way that you could, it's kind of a signal, an identifier. A person is always seeking love and affection. They're always looking for validation. They're moody. They take things personal, feeling very insecure, and they're always avoiding confrontation. Now, those are just a few. You guys know, and that's the reason I said I kind of opened up a can of worms, because those are just a few. There are so many other uh, ways that you can kind of pick out a person being broken and but we do want to address these are probably the the ones that are the most that people uh, actually do and so the trust issues the reason that has to be addressed is first off as you guys know inside of a relationship without trust you don't have a relationship I like to use the analogy um, that I heard from Tony Robbins a long time ago and it still holds true that's why I love to use it but it's an example of going up a mountain where there's one lane going up and there's one lane coming down and how do you go up a hill like that to get to the top because you have to go up the hill to get to the top how do you go up a hill like that knowing that the people in the other lane coming down or even the person behind you may not be committed to stay behind you and the person coming down may not be committed to staying in their lane in other words, today they may have decided they're done or just the fact that somebody fell asleep at the wheel or anything. I mean, there's all different ways that we know accidents do happen. and that kind of, But knowing that that possibility exists and knowing going off the side of that cliff is not a good, <laughs> good uh, position to be in, knowing that is even exists, the possibility how do you go up a hill like that? Just driving your car. How do you drive your car knowing that the people in the other lanes and behind you and stuff may not be committed to their side of the road? We, we see it all the time. People look at their phone and stuff. They ain't committed to driving. Um, but how do you do this knowing these possibilities exist? You don't have a choice but to trust. Because if you don't trust, you can't get where you want to go. And that holds true in relationships. Without trust, the relationship cannot prosper. And that's why people have big challenges inside of their relationship. And one thing I've learned, at least I believe, a person that doesn't trust is a person that can't be trusted. Now, I didn't mean to offend because I know some of you be like, well, well, I don't trust people, but I can be trusted. Here's why I say this before you jump all over me. Is if you believe people can't be trusted, then anytime you're in a situation where you believe it's possible that someone might try to do something to hurt you or to do something against you, you're going to respond before they do to make sure it doesn't occur. You guys, and you guys have probably heard people that do that. They get in relationships and they feel like, oh, we're getting close. It's at that point 
where a person always betrays me, they do something wrong, so they sabotage the relationship. They do something, and sometimes it's not even conscious, it's just because it's so ingrained that they don't trust, or they don't believe that they can find love or, or get into a trusting relationship, they'll destroy it. They'll just start doing things that they shouldn't do that will destroy that relationship. And so, as you, as something we have to do, and you just have to get to that point where you just go, I'm going for it. Like I said, in relationships, you got to do that. You just got to go, I'm in. I may get hurt. That's a possibility. But I'm going for it. Because if you don't, you will never, ever be able to get where you want to go. And that means a relationship where that you can full play full out and fully enjoy it. Because folks, trust me, <laughs> trust. If your partner, if you don't trust them or someone that you're trying to get in a relationship, if you don't trust them, you think they don't know that? You think they don't feel that? And that's what they're going to give back to you. That's why I said a relationship like that without trust, it doesn't work. As human beings, we pick up on each other's vibes. And so if I know that you're a person that doesn't trust, I'm not going to be hanging out with you because, again, like I said, I believe people that don't trust are people that can't be trusted. And again, uh, don't take that personal. I just want you to identify if that does, if that is you. Really sit back and look at your life and see how many times that you make moves to keep other people from hurting you or what you perceive they're going to do to hurt you. And you do it and you cut them off by doing something in advance so you won't have to feel the pain. You got to get good at just trusting and you just got to do it. Okay. Um, now, the way we're going to do this is, is, is you guys have known, I've talked about the exercise that you have to do where the three questions you kind of ask yourself, you go on a scale of one to 10, where do I want the relationship with myself in terms of trust or anything? Where do I want to be on a scale of one to 10? Now, we know you're going to say 10. Even if you said nine, you're going to say Okay, the worst case scenario is a nine, but you're going to say 10 and you go, okay, and now on a scale of one to 10, where am I at? And if you say on a scale of four or five, on a scale of trusting people, I'm on a scale of four or five, folks, you can see there's a lot of room for growth. And then you just kind of make the decision, okay, what could I do over the next couple of days, today, next couple of days, a week, a month, what can I do to increase that trust level and work on it and being able to take people at their word. Now, folks, that doesn't mean that people are going to stop lying to you. People ain't going to stop, keep, stop misleading you just because you decide to trust. But here's one thing I know. When you are a person that trusts, and I believe I'm one of those people that I, I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. But one thing I'm very good at is picking up on people very quickly. And I believe that's why. Because if you're a person that's trusting, you pick up those vibes of a person who's not that way. And you just go, something just don't feel right. So, but anyway, okay, so so work on that. Use that one to 10. And folks, that works on everything. I told you, if you're in a relationship with your partner, on a scale of one to 10, where do we want our relationship? Where we think it's at right now? What can we do to get our relationship to a 10? But it works on all this also, okay? On a scale of one to 10, where do I think I'm at in my trust issues? How do I make the move to, to get better at this? Um, also make sure, and I talked about the exercise of doing, um, and we're doing that for the 21 days, but do this, yeah, do it for 21 days. I mean, you could do it for the rest of your life, but the three statements are, and you have to use your name in front. The first one is, I am proud of you for. The second one is, I um, I forgive you for. And the third one is, I commit to you. Two, you know, and so by this, you would say like in the first one, and you want to put seven endings at the end. But if the first one is, I, I am proud of you for. So I would say, Ron, I am proud of you for completing this video. Ron, I am proud of you for being a person of high character. Ron, I am proud of you for always uh, striving to have great integrity. So you want to do this and have seven endings. 
Um, they could be the same if you feel like there's an area you really truly work need to work on or you get stuck because the whole idea of this exercise is not to get stuck, it's for it to flow. And so you may for, for three times say, Ron, I'm proud of you for having great integrity. I'm proud of you for your character, Ron. I'm proud. And do seven of them and, and talk to yourself. You're looking at the person in the mirror and you're having this conversation because we're going to love us some us when we get through with all of this. And then the second one, of course, is going to be, I forgive you for. And this is where a lot of the healing is going to come from. A lot of you, if you actually do this, you'll probably end up doing some crying sessions. Even in the trust issues, when you're talking about that, you know, some of you, because of maybe something that you've done or something that you were in a relationship that maybe um, you were abused, either mentally or physically, because you guys know I say mental or physical, it's time to go. But you got to forgive yourself for being in that position, because if you don't, then again, you put up a, a wall and it will never allow you to get in a relationship, a future relationship and make that work. And so you got to be able to forgive yourself for that. And then that's going to take you to that third question, which is I commit to you that. And so even in this this particular one, if we use that, if we said I forgive you for finding yourself in a position of being able to be abused mentally or physically. And then the, the, with that third one, you're going to say, as I commit to you, that we will take the lessons from that relationship and build a, the character and integrity to make sure that now we can identify that person to make sure we never position, put ourselves in that position again. Now, in each one of those statements, again, the first one is, um, I'm proud of you for. The second one is, um, I forgive you for. The third one is, I commit to you. Do those and make sure you say your name first. Ron, I commit. Ron, I forgive. Okay. So make sure, again, and you're in the mirror and you're having that conversation. If you do that, a lot of this stuff that we're talking about here, the brokenness, we will overcome it just by doing this exercise. But anyway, but the person is always seeking love and attention. It comes down to the same thing in the, in the validation, as you guys know, is how you feel about yourself. Um, again, you guys hear me all the time talk about there's two ways to build the tallest building. One is you build the tallest building. The other one is tear down the buildings around you so you are the tallest building. And that's where most people live. They live their life tearing down other people so that they feel better about themselves. So the people that we look at, you know, that, that, that walk around and speak highly of themselves and stuff are usually the people with the lowest self-esteem. Um, and that's why they're trying to convince themselves that they're all the stuff that they're putting out there. Our thing is for is to get you to a point where you really, truly feel that way about yourself. And then you don't have to say it to the world. You don't have to say, I look fine, ain't I fine? Look, at, you, know, you don't need that. If that stuff comes, you appreciate it. You're grateful for it. But it's not going to be the driving force that you need in your life. And so and then we talk about the moody. <laughs> this one. <laughs> Listen to the conversation. Pay attention to how your mood switch. And a lot of it is because you're living in a world that you believe one, you have to be right. And two, possibly because of the trust issues, you refuse to put yourself in a position to let anyone else um, feel as if they're taking control of a situation or put you back in that position of, of, of the trust or whatever. And so your moves will switch quickly when you feel you're being attacked. And you have to learn how to quit taking things personal, which was another one, taking things personal, the insecurity. Um, people have the right to view the world the way they choose to. That's their right. You have to come very good at understanding that they have the right to their own opinions. You guys have heard the saying is, your opinion of me is none of my business. That's kind of where you have to get to. You have to get to the point where, and again, for me, I never tell you get to a point where you don't care what other people think because the world will tell you that. Because I think, one, you'd have to be pretty arrogant really not to care what other people think. And, um, and two, you would stop being a human being. And I know some people will hear me say that and they go, 
well, I don't care what other people think. And, you know, the first thing I'll say is, so you have, you really don't care what your wife think. You don't care what your kids think. You don't care how your, your mom looks at you. You don't care about none of that. Well, well, those exceptions, no, you can't have exceptions. Either you care what people think or you don't. My process and what I believe to be true is that you weigh what people think. And then you decide on if the information they sent me is good information. And again, it may not be even presented the way I want it presented. It may not even came from the person that I wanted it to come from. But it's good information that I need. I got to take that information and use it. But if the information is being used as an attack and they're only trying to destroy me, that's the stuff I agree. Let that stuff run down your back and we're not going to be concerned with it. Um, you guys have heard me talk about uh, a gentleman that made the comment, and, and I agree with him. He said he always looks into the section um, in all of his business ventures where it's people that give the negative feedback. And because the negative feedback is how you grow your business. It's not from, and most of us don't recognize, it's not from all the people that are patting you on the back and all the people that are saying you're awesome, you're incredible. You appreciate that again. That, that, that you know We're grateful for that. But you can't grow with that. You need the people that are willing to tell you. And I mean, they don't have to do it in a negative way, but they, you need that where people are saying, well, have you tried this? Here's another option. Here's another way. Somebody may just let you know you're just being a jerk. And it's true. And you got to be willing to say, wow, okay. And then the, the, the last one we're talking about here is avoiding confrontation. For some of us, we just got to watch the way the words that we, how we define words. And if confrontation has a negative connotation to you, then you got a choice. Either you have to change the way you feel about the word confrontation or you stop using the word confrontation. You guys will be amazed at how your life would change. If you stop using certain words, if you're a person that you say angry, because I remember someone was telling me that they said they, they were like, man, I just get so angry. And I'm like, wow. I said, just saying the world angry gets you in that state of anger. So you got a choice. You got to change the way you look at the word anger or you got to get it out of your vocabulary. I said, start saying stuff like I was a little irritated. You know, I was a little disappointed. And it's funny because people start to think, well, that doesn't have the same impact. Exactly. It doesn't have the same impact. And that's your whole point. Confrontation may instantly bring up a negative feeling within you. So, of course, you would want to avoid it. Remember, we do things in life for one or two reasons, either to avoid pain or to gain pleasure. If confrontation is a negative word, stop using it. Avoid it. Okay. And look at it as I believe in having conversations in order for to get people to understand where I'm coming from. Or, you know, in your own words, however you want to phrase this to where you look at it in a different way, because you have to be willing to, and we've all heard before, if you don't stand up, you know, you will be treated the way you allow people to treat you. It's real. It's real. If your people will take advantage, some people, not all people, some people will take advantage of you if you allow it. And so if you're a person that, as we're saying, avoids confrontation, those people will take full advantage of you. And that's why, again, even when I hear people say uh, a person is so nice and stuff and and nice people finish last, all that stuff's garbage. It's not true. Because to say nice people finish last would say bad people finish first. And when you say it to people, they go, what? That's not what I said. That's exactly what you said. Because there's always two sides to everything. So if a nice person finishes last, then that means a bad person finishes first. So you're telling me all the people that are happy in their lives are actually bad people. And we know that's not true. See, there's a difference between a person that's nice and a person that's a pleaser. See, there's a difference. I consider myself to be a very nice person, very pleasant, but don't cross me. You follow me? I will put you in, a, in your place if I feel that you're trying to use me or I feel like you've crossed that line. 
And most people will never see that side of me because you should you shouldn't ever see that side of me. But and that's what I'm saying. So there's a difference in being nice and being a pleaser because a pleaser will make themselves uncomfortable and be unhappy in their life. And, and again, the reason they're that way is because of low self esteem. That's the whole reason. It's not that they're nice. It's that that particular person has a very low self-esteem. And so to help them build their self-esteem, they're trying to get people to make them feel significant. And therefore, they want to avoid the confrontation and the stuff that we're talking about. Because And so that's a different conversation. That's a whole different, we can get into that at a different, that's a whole different conversation on people who are pleasers. Versus a person that's nice. That's why I don't buy that when I hear ladies say, well, you know, you got to be a B. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have to be a, a person. That's like saying a guy, a guy saying, that's why you have to be a jerk. No, you don't. You're choosing to be a jerk. You can be a person who doesn't allow people to run over you without being a jerk and without being a B. You guys know what I'm talking about? You can do that when you have high standards. That's really the whole key. I don't have to go out here and be disrespectful, dishonoring, um, like I said, being a jerk or you know whatever you want to call it. You don't have to do that. And you can still get the job done. But anyway, um, so you guys can see, I kind of glanced over those. Hopefully, there's enough insight in there. The major things is do the exercise that we're talking about with the person in the mirror. That will address a lot of this as far as the brokenness and also get you to a point where you start to love the person in the mirror as you do that conversation. Do the, the one, one to ten where you're at. Make sure you're journaling. You know, you guys have heard me talk about that before so that you can see where you are now and where you end up and do this for 21 days i, I told you guys I'm, I'm getting ready to go on and um and do a book um and it's going to be on the 21 days in order to get you to that self-love because after we went through the book you know a, a few weeks ago of uh, the young lady who did that um i just feel this is it's a great idea the concept because most habits change within 21 days um i mean you could change them faster with impact and that's why we're saying that doing the thing in the mirror, if you do that, it becomes impact, especially if you do it with meaning. And you can actually change it a lot sooner. You can do it the same day. It's just like if you go to the doctor and the doctor tells you if you eat certain foods, you're going to die. Or you smoke that cigarette or you take another drink or whatever. If you're a person that values your life, you can stop right there on the spot. People do it all the time. There's people that didn't go to the doctor and they'll tell you from a spiritual perspective, they were healed of their drugs and everything else just like that through their spiritual connection. Now, I'm not here to have a spiritual conversation. That's not the point of this guy. I'm just saying impact. You can change things quickly. The 21 days is saying if you don't have a major impact, you can still make the switch if you do it consistently for 21 days. All right. So let's take that. Um, give me feedback. Again, I, I got a feeling. Based on the feedback you guys give me, I got a feeling I'm going to have to go through each one of these individually and go through how do people get to that point and then again, how to get away from that on each topic versus just like now, I just went through a general conversation. So give me your feedback and let me know. And I look forward to talking to you guys. For those of you on Self Love Monday, I look forward to seeing you guys next Monday. For those of you on Relationship Thursday, I look forward to talking to you on Thursday. And Make sure you get over to my site, ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. That's where I got everything that I'm doing, everything that I'm into. Um, it's a great way to communicate with me. Um, like I said, if you if you can't catch up with me, it's because you're not trying to. So anyway, as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. I'll talk to you soon. Take care and enjoy the journey. Bye-bye.